Hi, it's Bridget, and welcome to Sunday Morning Coffee with Bridget. <sighs> All right, so I got my nice, hot, steaming hot cup of coffee in my hope mug today. Mm. It's interesting how your perspective really changes um, <laughs> when you get into kind of a habit or a rhythm. So it is summer when I'm recording this and I love the warm weather and it had, we've had beautiful days, 80 plus degree days, some humidity, it's July here in Minnesota and the hot days and the sunny days like this are very special because there's not that many. And so it's been about two months now almost and about six, eight weeks, six, probably six weeks that I've been enjoying the weather intentionally and like all the time, like spending as much time as I can outside. And if you watch Bridget inspired my Instagram, you know that because <laughs> you've seen the pictures, right? Being in nature, getting recharged and like hours, I'll spend like three hours outside <laughs> just in a row, just chunks of time. And you get used to it. You know, I'm getting used to it. And because of that, this morning, it's like 65, 67 degrees. It's a warm 65, 67, but it's early yet. And I, so I had to put my, <laughs> I had to put a little jacket, kind of hoodie on type thing. It's not a hoodie, but a little jacket because it's a little chilly. Even in my office, it's a little, a little cold here, but perspective changes. Interesting how that happens when habits are born. There are a couple different topics I'd like to talk about. Um, I'm not sure which one is going to land. So I'm going to do something with you that I usually do before I step into Sunday morning coffee. I'm going to show you how I do my work in the world, whether I'm doing a motivational talk, whether I'm connecting with an intuitive talk topic and doing some kind of teaching or education around intuition or energy or spirit, under, spirit understanding, or whether I'm getting ready for a private session or doing up of life channel videos of channeling after life celebrity guests, whatever I'm doing, this is how I begin my work. So I'm gonna let you see this part, okay? So first I lit a candle to bring in the light and the inspiration to help me to kind of turn on the energy inside me to just remind me of the good and the light. And then I, I have an incense cone actually burning right now. It is um, Palo Santo, which is a, a wood that you can use for clearing. Um, I don't necessarily, I'm not necessarily using it for clearing. I'm using it to allow my room to be ready and freshened up for whatever we are going to share. Because every time I step in front of the camera, every time I turn on my microphone or my recording on my phone, it is a channel. It is a collaboration, an effort to bring through energy, not just words or sound or something in Bridget's little brain. It is a co collaboration. So I'm going to arrive here now with you, just feeling into the energy, connecting in sort of dropping the thinking mind, the need to be good or on point or whatever it might be for me. Usually it's something, I want to make sure it's meaningful. That's my intention. Okay. So breathing in. I'm noticing a little stuck energy in my belly. Under my rib cage, solar plexus area. Solar plexus is a chakra. It's beautiful, bright yellow sun chakra connected to your intuition. It's the temple within you it's god voice creator universe your inner wisdom holds your purpose this is there's many you have and i feel a little bit of stuckness so i'm just going to move my body just gently stretching side to side that's it physical body movement tends to help with for me with intuitive connection it releases the the muscles that acknowledges the physical body as a vessel or vehicle to support me as I'm connecting, as I'm bringing through the best and 
most beautiful alive energy that will inspire you and fill you with hope. So I need to create room to let my body be open to connecting with the words that my mind is wanting to share and through the energy of interpretation. Because the mind likes to have a role. And that's what words are so handy for. That's why journals are so important. That's why speaking, finding the, the most aligned words is so poignant, especially now. And it's also why words trigger people, why words really bring people into a place where they oh, want to fight you. Because there's memory with the word. So we work with the mind from the body, from the heart, from the filtering center of the heart, understanding that emotions and emotional responses are naturally part of any conversation. They are organic and they should be respected as organic. And what I mean by that is within you and your body. So I'm feeling a little stiff. Just a tiny little bit. I haven't done any yoga stretches yet today. I do have a big, nice, fat, thick yoga mat in here that is like laying right beside my rolling desk that I have so that I can do stretches, but I haven't quite got there. Upper back, loosening up that back of the heart chakra, opening the wings of the heart to just soften. Sometimes it seems like after a sleep, or after an experience, maybe you've had an exchange with someone, the shoulder blades at the back are kind of tight, like uh, armor together, tight, 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 tight. And you notice this because it kind of feels like you're leaning forward and your shoulders are a little creeping up toward the ears to like, get ready. Let the shoulders drop. Let those beautiful wings, that's what the shoulder blades look like to be wings, slide into a comfortable position so they can just be open and kind of chill. <laughs> just like archangels, you know, chill wings, just kind of chill. In the back, just breathe into the heart space. Imagine that you're doing that. And soften the energy. Notice if the right side or the left side is a little more tense. This, these are literally things I do. It happens really quickly before I get into a session sometimes or really quickly before I do channeling, but allow myself to really honor the body's presence because the human form as a person, because I'm a person, this is how I can hold, channel, share energy with you, be here with you now. Just like you are here with me now, whether you're listening or watching, you're here with me. So you see, I guess you're not alone, are you? No, you're not. Feel that energy? Yeah, there's definitely some swirling in the heart. I'm gonna acknowledge that. It looks like a spiral in the heart chakra. And the interpretation of that for me is, it feels like there's some energy moving in the heart space and energetic movement is always a good thing. It's not bad. And emotions are not, they don't have to be good or bad. They feel tight or oh, just out there. They just slide right out sometimes. Sometimes they slide out the, the eyes, <laughs> right? They we cry. Or sometimes they slide right out the mouth. Ooh, those could be challenging ones, aren't they? Yes. No matter, there's movement in the heart. That's a good thing. That means there's not stagnancy. That means there's change. That means there's evolution happening. Sometimes that can be difficult and challenging. It can feel turbulent. And other times can be welcomed. If it feels hard to breathe, then maybe ask your body why. What is it that you need to feel relaxed enough to be in a state where you can breathe? Sliding those shoulders, dropping the shoulders down, sliding the shoulder blades back. So your wings can be open in the heart space. The heart can then release like an exhale, like a steam on a train, just let it float out of your back. You don't have to know what it is that's bothering you. You don't have to know a specific place of life or a target point or a difficult dream you had or a challenging conversation you're impending and that's impending in your future. You don't have to know it, diagnose it. 
You can allow the feeling to just be present as a natural innate part of being a person, even if it's uncomfortable. The body is uncomfortable a lot. Is your body ever like perfectly feeling great? No, like right now I even I have a little itch on my shoulder. So I'm just going to itch that. See, it's not, it doesn't have to be this. Whose fault is it? My mind. Oh, I just check my ego. Oh no, it's my heart. My heart's the problem. I feel too deeply. I'm such an empath. Mm. No, diagnosing either one of those things as the bad guy is not going to help the rest of your team, which is your spirit, energetics, intuition, and your body, and your body holds a lot. And all of us collectively are realizing how much the body is holding, not just the people who have chronic illness, not just the people who are having panic attacks or finding it difficult to breathe. Your body is coming in to kind of squeeze the heart, to hold that sweet heart space that you have that is upset or uncertain. There's uncertainty. So your body is trying to squeeze that energy to hold it so that it feels held and wrapped and certain and safe. That's all that's happening. Your body is trying to assist you. So it's getting closer to you so that you know it's here and present for you. Your body is not the enemy. It is your ally. And the reason I can speak to this is because I know I've been on a journey with that this year. I have. It started last year. It's been like a full full year cycle now. And I'd say I actually made a commitment deeper to the relationship I have with my body as an intuitive vessel, as an oracle last December. And I've been working with it through um, scent and essential oil and through different techniques and things like acupuncture and hands-on healing. It's really allowed me to feel more in alignment with myself, my full authentic self. So the body is extraordinarily important and it is a part of you. So if you make any part of you bad, you are making you bad. You are creating the shame energy. You are creating the judgment whether it's coming from the heart and old feelings or memories of old feelings being triggered forward or trauma, traumatic responses, or whether it's the mind doing the same thing, trying to keep you safe, trying to keep you safe from that past threat that is not here. You are not, you are not a child anymore. You are not a young adult in that really awkward first relationship. You are not in that bad marriage anymore. And if you are, you can still find your way to your center. So by listening to your body, by simply stepping outside and taking a breath of air or doing it here and now, appreciating the warmth on your hands of a cup of coffee, even when it's hot outside, or the sun on your face, or the patterns of the clouds in the sky that you see with your human eyes and your brain processes the imagery. The brain is so good with images. It's almost too good with images. But that's a good thing because you can partner with your mind and your psychic abilities, your intuitive abilities to tune into what those images or symbols mean for you, like the clouds in the sky. It might just mean, hey, things are always changing, moving, and flowing. There's hope for your situation or circumstance to change and flow to. And it's happening below the surface and you are supported. The universe is harmonizing the energy for you and with you. So what you can do is breathe into this moment. Show up for you and the feelings you have. It's not about fixing. You don't have to fix the feeling. Do you have the wherewithal to just be with whatever emotions are moving in your heart space? Whatever that spiral is showing for you could feel chaotic. It could be an imagery of going inside to to really ask yourself that question of what am I feeling right now? So this is what I, a little bit of what I do when I step into session and then see how it just opens up here. And clearly we're talking about you and your body, mind, heart, and soul. So the topic of today's conversation at Sunday Morning Coffee is body, mind, heart, and soul. Or perhaps it's really about T 
teamwork, collaboration, and truest, sincere partnership. Whatever term or word your mind chooses to use for this, it's about you and your fullness, your wholeness. It's not about perfect. It's not about this is good, this isn't good, this is being worked on. It's not about that. It's about all the four parts, all the four aspects of you showing up just as they are. Show up as you are. Show up. Don't fight inside. It tears you apart. It keeps you fragmented. It makes you vulnerable to outside influences. And then you care more about other people's opinions or values than your own because you feel mixed up because you're not connected. You're not aligned. You're not, it's not a state of perfection. It's a state of flowing, constant flowing ability to move and shift, to be present for what is here for you now. And that's it. It is not a complicated formula. But for each of us, things look like, like that. Things look a little different. You could be dealing with disease in the body or chronic illness. And then you may have different areas of emphasis or focus as you move throughout your day. You might use tapping or EFT. You might be using acupuncture. You might be going to an herbalist or a naturopath. You might be doing some different kinds of therapies. You might be doing somatics or yoga or going to a float pool, for example. There's so much available to us. And there's a lot that's free. Just like this, I know you have to sift and sort. It's like YouTube is kind of like a thrift store. Ooh, that would be a good Sunday morning coffee. YouTube is like a thrift store. You can quote me, just make sure you put, or it didn't inspire on that, okay? <laughs> YouTube is like a thrift store. You have to sift and sort through things, but there's so much information. And there's a lot of people just like me that are working in their own little communities, their own states, neighborhoods, and who genuinely care and would like to share and encourage you and support you. They're, they're, not everybody on YouTube is a used car salesman trying to get your business. And what's wrong with the used car salesman anyway? We should probably stop judging them, right? They're just doing their job. But it's up to you to use discernment, your intuition, to decide what's the right content for you to digest or what the right technique or tool is. Maybe it's EFT tapping. Maybe it's network spinal analysis. Maybe it's bars, access consciousness. Maybe it's hands-on healing. Maybe it's Reiki. Maybe it's um, an intellectual, maybe it's taking a class or a program where you study an intellectual thing. I know that there's something my brain really wants to study. I'm thinking about it. I'm thinking about taking a college class again. Like you guys know, if you know me at all, you know, like I, I'm totally a student. I love it. I have, I have taken a, more than a handful of graduate courses, but they're in different things just because they're so interesting now. You know, and trying, trying on some stuff. Like I tried on a career in education. Hmm, not the best aligned fit for me. I love it though. I love being in a classroom, but this is a classroom. And I liked helping families. That was my thing is the kids, the parents, the families, you know, but it's fascinating. Let me just sidetrack. Let me tell you something about that. Talk about perspective. Nothing is a failure really. It's like, we're trying things on, okay? We're trying things out. Like pre-coronavirus, I was considering and contemplating a career in education, going back and getting my, I was actually in graduate school, taking courses for early childhood special education. And I wanted to work with kids who um, had uh, behavioral challenges and um, exceptionalities. And I was studying that. And during that time, I was working in classrooms and ended up having a body response. I actually had a shoulder injury that took me out for a couple of months. Like it was not a comfortable scenario. Luckily, I didn't have to have surgery or anything, but my body was telling me, no, okay, this is enough information. You've taken like four classes. You've worked in this environment in multiple settings. Um, in early childhood, and you have enough information to make a decision now. What do you think? My body literally, I had to stop working. I couldn't, I couldn't. And because um, I couldn't lift, it was painful, very painful. I stopped, ex I had to stop exercise. A lot of stuff changed dramatically. I was, stop, take a look now. You have enough information to make a decision here. And at that time, I decided not to go forward. 
And there were other factors, obviously, like my state was changing licensure requirements and um, I probably didn't need as much education as I was getting. I already have bachelor's degrees and stuff, just not in a related field directly. So you have to get a couple extra classes and take tests and stuff. But I could have gotten it in a different way too, obviously. But also my YouTube channel was growing fast and I had a ton of clients at that point. And it was like, wow, okay, so I have this. And sad to say, you can make more money doing other, I mean, sad to say that teachers are educate, working in education doesn't, you don't get, it takes, probably would take a long time to get wealthy or even be able to provide for your family without a part-time job, let me just say. I'm like, whoa, dude, I'm doing all this. It was just such a perspective I stopped and was like, does this make sense for me to pay this much to go to school and then make only this much? Like I already have, I could, it did, there was a lot. So my brain was involved too. My body was involved in my heart because I had some really deep experiences there emotionally with the children and some kids and getting attached to children who then are taken away out of the classroom because they're reunited with through the courts with families and situations that they should not be in and getting re I mean, it was a lot, you guys. And, and, for, and sadly, we had a child that died. I mean, it was just, there was a lot. And then this is not like, there was a lot. So my heart, my head, my body, my, there was a lot. And I knew that in my soul, I, I have a teacher element, that there's a part of me, a purpose of teaching. And I enjoyed my time in the classroom and with the children and knowing that I was supporting families because I was loving their kids the way that they would want them to be loved, of the way I would want my child to be loved and respected, even when they have challenges, you know, like behavioral stuff, like when they're coming at you and stuff, like it can be hard, but I appreciate having that experience but that was just a try on it was a sample and it's ironic because I would have literally been in the classroom during COVID it would have just started I would have graduated and started during COVID and that would have been crazy now everything's so different right and now here I am with you and I started my podcast about a year and a half ago and I love it I love this. And that you just kind of try things on and sometimes things stick. It just feels like you, it feels in alignment. So don't be afraid to connect and listen to the different parts of you that give you information. Not one part of you has to rule or decide or belittle the other parts of you. It's really a, a team effort. A collaboration. I don't know exactly what the future holds for me. There's a lot of choices. I am grateful for the choices and the struggles or challenges that I felt in my heart over the last year, really getting to know and just starting the tip of the iceberg of my body as an oracle, as my body as a very intuitive and in tune. And it makes a tremendous difference in the way you live your life when you recognize your body has just as much to say as your heart and your head and your spirit. Every part of you is in tune and intuitive. And so you can look back and the experiences that you've had, like my sharing with the educational piece. There's so many like rational pieces to that, heartfelt pieces, following a purpose that I had considered for years. This goes way back, like when I was um, first working in, or when I first had my daughter, actually had been in my career field for what, like five years, I think at that point. And I had this desire to maybe want to be a teacher. And I went even into classrooms at that point, observed classrooms. I looked into getting my master's at that time. That was like 20 years ago. 
And it just didn't make sense. Like financially, it would have been a huge pay cut and um, it just didn't make sense. And at that time, so I had to follow through on it for me to know, you know? So here I am and I'm continuing to evolve and grow. So too are you. So the last couple of years, there's been a lot of change and a lot of things shaken up. And yet it felt like maybe stagnant stagnation. But a lot of things inside have sifted and moved. And there's new information. And there's new ways to work within the resources you have inside you, your body, mind, heart, and spirit. It's not one dominating the other. Sometimes one will lead and the others will support it. But it cannot, the infighting, if there's disconnection or infighting, there's a reason for that. There's resistance between them. What is the resistance? Like if any relationship, it's hard to lean in and discover what that resistance is or how to soften it. And that's when this whole concept that seems ambiguous, the self-love comes in, self-healing comes in. And just, you got to allow yourself the patience to, it seems, it can't just happen immediately. Sometimes healing can, if you do tapping, it can quiet your heart quickly, soothe a panicky heart, can calm anxiety, but it is an awareness and a practice and a process. It is a devotion to yourself and your needs. Because that can't be met externally. It's got to be an inside job. It has to be. And all the things that you've done in the past or experienced in the past that have led you to this place that you're at, it's not that you're here because you didn't stick with something. It's that you're here because this is where you are to be. This is where you show up in the present moment. And you can make plans and set goals and dream for the future. With all these aspects of you, you can feel into it when you're manifesting, you can think it, you can focus on the, the imageries and the vision boarding and the, the practical ways, the small steps to break down a goal. And your heart and soul can feel, you can feel what it's like and your soul can be like, is this an alignment for me? Yes. Or, hey, I need some spirit guide help. Let's call in some reinforcements to assist us. Some archangels, like Archangel Ariel is a great organizer for people who are in entrepreneurialism or if you're looking to change things and get kind of a structure in to the practical aspects of energetics or intuition, bring in Archangel Ariel. Or if you're looking to rearrange your office, bring in Archangel Ariel or rearrange your life. Archangel Ariel, she's great. If you need an intuitive life coach by for a spirit guide, I would suggest Archangel Ural, U-R-I-E-L really connected to the solar plexus, kind of practical. If you want somebody fun for connection and communication, if you're working on relationships, if you're in a place where you want to connect with afterlife, if you've got some grief in that heart space and that's what that is that's moving, bring in Archangel Gabriel. Gabriel has a fun vibe that is uplifting and light, but also really works with um, women and children or parents and families. And so that can be something that really could help you out in relationships in general as well, just to give you some sense of how this works, okay? All right, so that's a lot for a Sunday morning coffee, but it's been great talking to you. Mm -hmm. Maybe we should call this one all of you, all of you. Hey, nice to see you. I'm working on some stuff. I hope you follow me on Facebook. I know not everybody's into Facebook, Bridget Inspired on Facebook, Bridget Inspired on Instagram. I'm working on a new website for Bridget Inspired and CL. So that should come up in the next couple of weeks, I hope. Just the basics, at least, so you can connect with me like this as an encourager, as the motivationator that I am. <laughs> so, yeah, bright days ahead. Sending you lots of love inspiration and hope as always and encouragement to live your life this is your life after all and you get to live it just today just right now one day at a time moment to moment sometimes right but live it deserve it deserve to be lived thanks for being here